Today, we are going to be discussing how to configure identity firewall services using vDefend Distributed Firewall. Our topology is simple for this demonstration. We will be focusing on three virtual machines, an engineering virtual machine, sales virtual machine, and finally, a jump host for users to access the virtual machine workloads. The jump host will be a simple Windows machine with guest introspection installed. Engineering users should be able to access the engineering workload and denied access to the sales workload. Sales users should be able to access the sales workloads and denied access to the engineering workloads. First, we must establish connectivity between the NSX manager and an Active Directory server. You can configure this by going to System and then Identity Firewall AD. From there, you would click on the Add Active Directory button. You can now input the Active Directory server information and establish connectivity. Once configured, you could check the connectivity status. We can choose to sync all OUs and domains or select specific OUs from our Active Directory server. Now, let's look at the groups we will need to make our identity firewall rules. Our jump host group has the jump host virtual machine as a static member. This jump host group will be used in the applied to field to ensure that these rules are only applied to the jump host virtual machine vNIC. We have the engineering virtual machine as a static member of the engineering workloads group. Also, the sales VM is a static member of the sales workload group as well. The engineering users group is configured to match users that are part of the engineering group in our Active Directory server. Finally, our sales users group is configured to match users that are part of the sales group in the Active Directory server. To enable identity firewall services in the distributed firewall, go to Security, Distributed Firewall, Settings, and then finally Identity Firewall Settings. Once you enable the feature globally, you can choose which clusters you wish to activate identity firewall services on. We created a policy section for storing all of the identity firewall rules. Rule ID 2004 allows sales users to reach the sales workloads. Rule ID 2005 allows engineering users to reach the engineering workloads. Rule ID 2006 denies sales users from reaching the engineering workloads. Rule ID 2007 denies engineering users from reaching sales workloads. All have the jump host group configured in the apply to field as stated earlier in this video. Let's log in as the engineering user on our jump host. In this example, our engineering and sales workloads are Linux machines. We establish an SSH session to the engineering workload to show our rule is working as expected. As you can see, the rule is working as expected. Now, let's try to establish an SSH session to the sales workload. It fails, meaning our identity rules are working. Let's log in as the sales user on our jump host. We will establish an SSH session to the sales workload to show our rule is working as expected. It's working, so let's test an SSH session to the engineering workload. And it fails as expected. Let's change rule ID 2006 to allow sales to reach the engineering workload. Back at the virtual machine, we show that we are still logged in as the sales user. Let's try that SSH session to the engineering workload now that the rule has been changed. We can establish a connection to the engineering workload, so the rule is working as expected. Identity Firewall is a powerful feature that allows you to control access to resources based on Active Directory grouping. For more information, be sure to check out the Identity Firewall section in the NSXT Data Center Administration Guide. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.